Welcome back. Did you know you could purchase optional lenses for your Bolt? Let's talk about why you might need them today on LaserNug. I know it's been a little while since I've released a video, but I've been kind of busy lately, especially after the Christmas rush. I've also kind of gone back to the drawing board a bit to start testing again with the laser and spending some time to learn more about it. And in doing so, I actually started spending a little more time testing out and trying these different optional lenses that you can get for your bolt. Depending on when you bought your bolt, you probably came with a standard one and a half inch lens. There was a period of time when they were selling them with a standard two and a half inch lens. And I think now they've gone back to the one and a half inch as the standard that comes with the machine. But you can still purchase these optional lenses. And in fact, these do come in really handy because you get different effects or different abilities depending on which one you're using. And we're gonna do that today. So I thought the best way to do it today was to actually do it with a piece of material. So I've got different thicknesses. This is a piece of cherry and it's real wood. And what I'm finding is that a lot of folks that have maybe more of a, a rural area or they like real wood, whether you're doing smaller designs or larger signs for families, you know, welcome to our family home kind of thing, they want real wood. They don't want plywood or MDF. They, they want real wood. And so I've been working more and more with maple and cherry. Maple uh, is a beautiful wood, but I love cherry. So I've got a quarter inch piece here, but I also have a half inch piece. And we're gonna demonstrate just the different results you can get with the different lenses, as well as cutting. When you're looking at different lasers, if you're still in the research space, the various different brands will have specifications, you know, how fast it is, the DPI or LPI, how much power, how much wattage your tube has or your RF laser. It'll also usually have a sentence that will tell you the maximum thickness of certain materials that that laser will be able to cut. But the truth is it actually will cut more and I'll show you that today. So let's jump into light burn. I'm just gonna to put together a simple design to engrave and then we're gonna do it three times on this quarter inch piece of cherry and we'll take a look at the differences. As always, I'm more than happy to share my settings that I'm using with these various lenses and I'll do that at the end of the video for those that are interested. Let's do it. So I put together a simple engrave here. What you'll see here is some of the standards I like to use when I'm testing my settings because I find that when you start to test, it might, you know, your settings might work well for one type of design or shape, but when you actually expand it out and use it for things like, you know, fine detail here on the roof or the fine detail in the inside of this chainsaw or the larger areas that need engraving off of these trees and more importantly, different types of fonts, that's when you really get to see how well your settings will work on a broader scale. So I've just put all three of these together. Obviously the chainsaw doesn't kind of fit the way it's sitting there, but I just wanted you to see the difference in quality. We're gonna put some settings in which I've already determined. We're gonna burn it once with the one and a half inch, then we're gonna burn it with the two and a half, and then we're gonna use the four inch lens. So starting off with my one and a half, I'll come down to my material library. I'm gonna to come to my one and a half inch. I've just put these in in the last few weeks. Uh, one and a half inch lens and I decided I was gonna stick with a chocolate brown setting here. And I'm gonna assign that to my black fill. Okay, it is. I'm in good, I'm one pass, I'm on fill. I'm gonna fire up the bolt and we'll send it over and we'll begin burning. The lenses are really easy to swap out. It's just there are two thumb screws here and on the four inch there's a third. Simply remove them. Slide your lens out. I'm gonna grab my one and a half inch and we're gonna slide that in. Oops. There we go. And then we just put our thumb screws back. Now the nice features with this bolt, which I still love now to this day after 14 months, very, very happy with this purchase that I made, is that the autofocus works the same, whether you've got the one and a half, the two and a half or four inch in. You don't have to make any adjustments or attempt to adjust the focus yourself. The way they've designed these lenses, they're set at different distances so that the same autofocus function will focus each one of the lenses appropriately. We're in.
So now we'll just swap out the lens from the 1.5 to the 2.5, the exact same settings for engrave, and let's engrave the next design. Let's change it out to the 4 inch lens and then we'll recreate it again using the exact same settings. Your 4 inch lens has a much larger lens and it sits on the outside before the mirror. And it requires one more thumb screw right up here at the top. Good to go. Good stuff. Let's take a look and compare the results. So again here, this was the one and a half inch lens, the two and a half, and that's the four. And at the risk of stating the obvious, I find it interesting no matter what my settings are for the one and a half, in and around this area, of course, the two and a half and the four inch burn so much cleaner. I have not touched this or cleaned it up at all. I haven't wiped it with a rag or a bit of water. I haven't sanded it. This is right out of the laser. They're virtually ready for a wipe with a cloth and ready to either throw some polyurethane on, uh, some linseed oil or whatever you want to do to finish it. But you'll notice I get a lot more residue off of the one and a half inch. The other thing which you may not be able to see clearly in the camera is the depth of engrave is continually deeper between the three lenses. This is the most shallow this one's a little bit deeper and this one's much deeper. You can feel it literally with your finger. But conversely, if you look at things like the chainsaw, more importantly, right in here, where you've got a few components and some definition, you tend to be further defined as you get down to the one and a half inch lens. So although these are very acceptable, both of them are. In fact, they turned out great. There's a clear difference between those rings and lines and the definition of the pull start between the three lenses. The other thing which may be a little easier for you to see is if you look at the words are they, which is the tiniest font we have, between the four, the two and a half, and then now the one and a half, you'll notice that the letters are much more defined on the one and a half. A very similar from my own naked eye between the four and the two and a half but clearly at different angles, you can see that the letters are much more defined, which is why I tend to find the one and a half inch lens gives you really, really finite detail, much better than the other two lenses. However, on some materials, as I've been testing, it's become very apparent that you get much better quality on certain types of designs or types of materials with a two and a half, and in some cases the four inch, than with the one and a half, and by all means, with either one of these lenses, you can keep adjusting your settings, but there's a point where you'll just find that the quality that you're looking for is going to be achieved much better with the other lens. The one and a half lens, of course, is my go-to lens or used to be, but more and more, including for tumblers, I've started using the two and a half inch lens far more than the one and a half because unless I have really tiny fonts or tiny details, I get a much cleaner more consistent uh, engrave out of it than the one and a half. I still get an excellent engrave, but the quality or the difference in the quality and the texture, whether it's on drinkware or tumblers or now on cherry wood, 
and some of the plywood applications, that two and a half may not give me the definition, but if I don't have really tiny fonts or tiny details, I need to make sure are clean. Uh, the two and a half works great. So what's the point of the four inch? Cutting thick materials. That's your quarter inch, which I cut out yesterday. But I thought for today, I would just show you that even though the specs on this bolt, for example, says that it will only do a quarter inch MDF or three eighths acrylic, I believe it is, like many other specs on different lasers, that assumes you're doing it in one pass. And by all means, efficiency is, is very important. But in my case, I've got the bolt, I love this machine, but I am starting to wander into thicker materials like this 9 16 piece of cherry wood. Eighth inch and quarter inch type materials work for me probably 80% of the time, but the more I'm kind of branching out a bit, which is why I started doing more testing, was to understand maybe more of the differences between the different lenses, especially since I barely used the four or the two and a half to date. And also I wanna get into thicker materials. At first I thought, well, I'm not gonna be able to cut it, but I've learned over the last number of months that you don't have to do everything in one pass. And in this case, with a four inch lens to get that extra depth, I can cut this in three passes. Let me show you. So I have my half inch cherry. I've just made a simple design. I've sent it to the bolt and I'm using my four inch lens. As mentioned, the lenses are designed to work with the standard autofocus, so there's no adjustments necessary between the lenses. You just autofocus as normal. We'll set our origin and let's cut our piece. When you're cutting materials, especially something this thick, you always want high air, always. I've also learned as I start to cut different thicknesses of materials beyond the spec, that I tend to only cut once or twice I'll wait or pause maybe 20, 30 seconds, and then I'll continue the next pass. And the reason I do that is because a lot of these materials are flammable. And you'll find that if you continually cut one pass after another after another, that you may find that the wood or the MDF starts to smoke and may start to flame up. So this way it gives the wood a chance to cool before I send the laser through it again. And that should do it. So there we have it. Nice clean cut. Through some of the testing I've learned that if you use way too much power or you pass through too many times on the thickness, you're going to get more scorching. You'll notice I have barely any scorching at all there. In this case, on the cherry wood, I'm at 100% and I've kept it at five millimeters, but it gives me a nice, clean, sharp cut all the way through with very little scorching. So that's allowed me now to expand a little bit more on the size of materials that I'm using. And I'm pretty excited about it, to be honest, because I've wanted to move to you know thicker wood and more natural woods. However, there is a limit. I attempted the same testing on a three quarter inch piece of plywood and you'll find that doesn't work out so well. And what happens is the more passes you make on the plywood, it begins to char and literally burn the top of it as it's still trying to get through the bottom. So there's definitely a limit there. Plus plywoods, of course, are made up with glue and a number of plies. So you've got other materials in there that will catch fire or start to smolder if you continue to pass one after another without waiting a little bit for it to cool down. So I hope today was very helpful for you folks to get an opportunity to see if you haven't purchased the optional lenses, whether there might be a value to you. Over the last several weeks, month or so, that I've been focused on changing the lenses to see the different results on different types of materials, uh, I've learned a lot. 
I'm not saying I'm an expert, and I'm, I'm certainly not telling you that I'm exactly correct in everything I say, but the results speak for themselves. I am pleased that I spent the money on the optional lenses, and now that I'm going to start using them more, I'm going to get a little more benefit out of my bolt. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other, and I hope to see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers. Okay, and for those interested, let me give you my settings for cherry wood. The settings I used for the engraved for the one and a half, two and a half, and the four inch lens was 500 millimeters per second, 40 and 40 min and max power, fill mode, of course, and 398 lines per inch. And that gives you the colors that you saw. If you want a darker color, especially with the one and a half, Increase your lines per inch. Uh, that will darken everything. Or, of course, you can play with your power. Move this to 50%, for example, and you'll see a much darker finish. If your power is too high, you're going to get charring, or you're going to see it's kind of burning the wood in spots because, you know, it's a natural wood. It's not perfectly consistent inside. But I find this works well, and in order to darken it, I just increase my lines per inch. On the cut setting for the 4-inch, uh, for quarter inch, that is at 12 millimeters per second, 90% min and max power, line mode, high air, always high air, especially with a flammable material, and it takes two passes to get through cleanly. Sometimes I get through in one, but two will get you wherever it is that your design is, anywhere in your work bed. And for the half inch cherry, you're going to want to make three passes. It's at five millimeters per second, 100% min and max power, line mode, high air, one pass here, but I've just left myself a note down here. You can see three passes. And again, sometimes you make it through in two, but you have to push the piece out. Three will usually get you right through nice and clean, so it just falls out for you. I hope that's helpful. Have a wonderful week. Cheers.